Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining. Welcome to Where We Work, the expansion of remote and hybrid models uh, hosted by Purpose Jobs. Uh, my name is Hannah, and I will be your moderator today. Uh, I'm joined here by Will, AJ, and Kim, um, some amazing uh, community members from, from Purpose Jobs. If you're unfamiliar with Purpose Jobs, we uh, are storytellers and community builders within the Midwest tech and startup scene, uh, and really excited to be bringing you this event. Um, so my name is Hannah, as I said, um, I lead community and uh, talent over at the Purpose team. Um, I'm excited to kick things over to our panelists to share some introductions, but we'd also love to hear from all of you as well. Um, if you don't mind, go ahead and post in the chat. Let us know who you are, where you're calling from, uh, and what brought you to the event today. Um, we're really excited to have you here with us um, and, and engage with you. Uh, a couple of just reminders that are also posted in the chat. Um, throughout, the, throughout the panel, please uh, don't be afraid to post questions. We want to integrate um, you into the conversation as well. Um, and so we'll work to get, get to those throughout the conversation um, and or at the end. Um, so without further ado, though, we will get things started. Um, I'm going to ask our panelists to introduce themselves. Um, and share just a little bit about, about their background um, and especially where does their company work. So, Will, I'm going to kick things over to you first, if that's okay. Okay. Thanks, Anna. Um, AJ, Kim, really nice to be with you today. Uh, I'm Will Post. Uh, I look after our revenue organization for Vidmob, which is a, a company I've been with for just under a year. They're headquartered in New York, uh, but we have offices in any number of cities, including the Chicago market, which is where I'm based. Um, I'll get into my specific location maybe later on, but uh, I've spent my career through uh, advertising and technology uh, over the past couple of decades, starting on the agency side, working with media companies, tech companies, and now with Vidmob, which is the leader in the creative intelligence space for advertisers. Nice to be with you today. Awesome. Thanks, Will. AJ, we'll kick things to you next. Awesome. Thanks, Hannah. Um, my name is AJ Schwartzkopf. I am a vice president of talent acquisition for Lower.com. Uh, Lower.com is a growth stage uh, series A fintech uh, digital lender here headquartered in Columbus, Ohio. Um, so we specialize in full stack mortgage lending services and products. Um, brief career path about me. Um, let's see, I have about 10 years in counting um, in recruitment. Um, so all things talent related. Um, the first half of my career I spent uh, with an external agency specializing in tech recruitment. Um, I later moved into an internal role, role excuse me, um, for the next four years or so uh, with a Fortune 15 organization um, where I had the opportunity to build and run their global contingent uh, workforce strategy, which was really fun. Um, and then that leads to me to Lower, uh, which is where I am now. Um, and I was approached with the opportunity to come in lower, to Lower and help scale um, their staffing organization and recruitment organization. Um, so uh, working across sales technology operations and corporate um, to help put the right uh, people in the right places. Awesome. Thanks, AJ. And Kim, we will go to you last. Great. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Kimberly Sullivan. I'm thrilled to be here uh, today with you all. Um, I'm originally from the East Coast, but I've been in beautiful Cleveland, Ohio for the last 20 ish years. It's become my home um, and is truly my favorite city in the world. Uh, my career background has been really focused on the optimism that it's possible to create a best place to work. Um, within that comes a lot of growth and experimentation across organizations. And I've been lucky to work with some wonderful organizations varying from in-person to 100% remote, from startup and scale-up to established. Um, but the main thing across all of these was the desire to lean in, listen, learn, and make the best place to work for all. Um, so I've worked for multiple different countries in my own travels, and now I'm back in a hybrid environment. Uh, so I found my best way to work. Um, I'm not sure organ organizations have found a best place to work, and that's the reason why we're all here, to help those organizations. I'm currently the VP of People and Culture at Fund That Flip. Uh, we are the predominant platform that empowers real estate investors to operate their businesses more profitably. Uh, we started in helping support flips, hence the name. Um, and so uh, we funded flips. And what makes us different is that we also have a retail platform where credit investors can invest in our properties as well. So yeah, excited to chat more about all of these uh, exciting topics with you all today. Awesome. Thank you, Kim. Thank Hannah, you all. Hannah, I apologize. Leave it to me to leave out um, where my company works. I think I had mentioned that we're in Columbus, Ohio, um, as far as our headquarters go. 
Um, and while the majority of the organizations situated here, um, we do have a distributed workforce across the domestic U.S. Um, so we have um, remote workforce, a remote workforce hybrid, um, and then office-based as well. Thought that was important given the topic. Of the <laughs> Thank you, AJ. I, I appreciate that. I, I was going to loop it back into the next question. So um, definitely, if, if you missed it, let us know where you work. But um, what's been your personal experience, too, with where you work uh, pre-COVID, uh, pre uh, throughout COVID, and, and now? Uh, tell us a little, little bit about what that looks like. And AJ, why don't you just continue down that train of, of what's been kind of your experiences with it? Yeah, I've had a little bit of everything. So pre-pandemic, I was with Cardinal Health, um, also headquartered here in Columbus. And simply due to space constraints, our department was operating off of a hybrid work model. Um, so prior to um, COVID, I was already used to a flexible uh, work solution um, with about two to three days at home um, and the remaining in the office. Um, when COVID hit, we were one of the first organizations to go fully remote um, and one of the last to return to office. Um, so um it was um a, a a very um unique transition to lower um because when i had joined lower i would say that we were definitely more office first um and still are for some of our departments but as an, a whole we were um almost entirely based in office at that time um and during the pandemic i had a small life change i became a first time mom so i was also um, very much um, just adapting adapting to work-life balance. Um, so post-pandemic, I entered almost a 100% office-based environment. Um, I've leveled out somewhere in between, um, which um, is now um, office-based, um, but with um, quite a bit of remote flexibility um, and a lot more hybrid opportunity across the, the organization here at Lower. Awesome. Thanks, AJ, for sharing. Kim, why don't we go to you next? Yeah. So uh, pre-pandemic, I was at a 100% remote organization. So um, we maintained that 100% remote um, as we rolled into the pandemic. It just leaned into empathy even further because remote wasn't remote. We all had a lot of uh, colleagues in our homes and teaching school and all those things that came along with actually being remote. So there's still a lot to learn about how do we make sure we're leaning into empathy and creating the space for people to work wherever they work. Um, where I am now at Fund That Flip, um, we have leaned into listening to our team members. Now, there are some roles we do need to be in the office due to the nature of that. But for the most part, you can pick if you want to be office connected or if you want to be uh, dis d distributed. And each of those comes with um, a sort of benefit, right? So if you come to the office, you'll have an office setup. If you are not office connected, you can come in whenever you want, but you don't have a desk setup. You have a hoteling setup, right? And if you're distributed, we'll help you set up your home office. Um, which is not you something you get if you're office linked. So we're trying to figure out that new normal of like for those roles where we can enable it. Um, how much we, we want to make sure that our team members can lean into telling us how they work best while creating a space here in the office that anyone can come hang out in. Now we do have multiple offices. We also have a New York office, um, and we have multiple team members distributed across the U.S. Uh, but this is kind of our Cleveland has become kind of our home base. Um, and we've also leaned into doing summit weeks where we bring everyone together safely when it is safe to do so, um, so that we do get that in-person time too. We've just really tried to continue to lean into listening to our team members. I, pre-pandemic, thought I'd never go back to an office again. I was like, I love working remotely. This is the way to go for me. Um, and it turns out I really love the option. I love coming into an office when someone's not forcing me to come into an office. It's a very different mindset for me. Um, so I'm here several days a week, and I've really enjoyed that hybrid flexibility that I'm able to lean into. I love that, Kim. Love what you said about empathy and just listening to your team members. I think we'll just continue to, to get into that topic. So uh, thank you for sharing, Kim. Uh, Will, we'll kick it over to you. Sure. Yeah. So um, I, I love that we're already talking about kind of the mindset shift, depending on where you're where you're doing your work from. Um, Pre-pandemic, I was working for a different company. Uh, a company formerly known as Facebook, now Meta, um, but it was Facebook the whole time I was there. Um, I had spent a lot of years there out of their Chicago office, which during my time I saw grow from a little over 20 people to a little over 500 people. And really it became kind of a, a flagship hub 
uh, for our offices within the, the central states. Um, and uh, looked after a team. I would say that I was mostly in the office, but I traveled a fair bit too. So I didn't consider that to be working remotely, but I definitely worked from a lot of different locations and kind of working from everywhere uh, is how I, I feel I was working. And to some extent feel that's sort of the rhythm that I've found myself in now. So um, made a change uh, a year ago uh, and went from a very big company to a much, much smaller company. Uh, but I, I, I feel like I've covered a lot of ground in terms of just the experiences of what it's like to get teams together in person in an office. And that was kind of our default to where now everybody's uh, pretty well distributed. Thank you all for sharing. Uh, so the next question we're going to dive into is, is a pretty broad one. But let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons that you and your team have experienced um, you know, over the last few years around the different models. So a hybrid model, a remote model. Uh, or in an office model. Um, would love to just kind of uh, dive into those a little bit more. Um, AJ, do you want to kick us off on that one again? Sure. Um, I mean, I think the pros are, are pretty obvious, right? Or at least the big pros, I should say, the flexibility and the balance that it can provide um, both uh, employees um, and then personally. Um, so those with a commute, right? Um, getting time back into their day. Um, it can lead from a recruitment aspect. So for my job, right, it opens up a talent pool that otherwise we wouldn't have access to if we were recruiting locally. Um, it just, um, and, and it really opens up a, a level of, and I'm sure we'll get to this later on, um, inc inclusion as well um, within that talent pool. Um, but those are like the, the latent pros to me. If, if, um, if, you can cut me off and I'll, I'll turn it over to somebody else, but that's what that's what's top of mind. Um, um, and I think um, what's also top of mind for for talent seeking uh, new opportunities as well. For sure. Kim, do you want to jump in? I don't know, one of the major pros that that it uh, caused for all of us to do was become better managers of our team members. Um, it was really easy to manage someone. You're like, they must be working. Their car is in the parking lot. And just like assume people are working and now we've become more impact driven. We've become more outcome, outcome driven, which has enabled additional flexibility outside of just like where you work, but when you work and how you work and all these things that like we were, we as uh, organizations were so scared to dive into before. And that's been a huge pro because it's now like allowing people to be more transparent about their parental needs or be more transparent about their caring for a loved one needs. And not having to make a choice between work and those items, but finding more of that. I don't like the term balance because I don't know about you, but I never find a balance. So yeah. <laughs> more like it's more like the flow of life. I love being able to put I'm phone only because it's kid pickup during this time versus putting appointment or something or having to find a solution for that. It's finding more of that flow. And the ability of remote work has caused us to have all these conversations we wouldn't have before. Um, and it's been really, that's been a huge pro, a huge pro to be able to listen to our team members and learn more about how they work best instead of us forcing them into a bucket of how they work best. And, and Kim, I've started to use the word harmony, work-life harmony. Because well, it's harmony. I, 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 I love that. that. <laughs> yeah, now, there's no yes. balance. So. <laughs> we might as well stop going with it. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we'll kick things over to you. Some days are more harmonious than others, but yeah. uh, but I, I I like the I like the the change there. Um, yeah, I I totally agree with what Kim has said. I think um, you know having worked for two different companies during this period of time um, where a lot of us are, are remote or distributed, both really prioritize work life balance and transparency, and you know leading with EQ and for all wonderful reasons. I've found this shift to people having to kind of invite you virtually into wherever they might be working from office or not, just kind of forced a new level of transparency and added some new dimension to what people really have going on in their lives. So it's one thing for a tops down mandate of we want everybody to have work life balance, but that looks a little bit differently when, you know, I can see into someone's situation that things look a little out of balance and maybe they need, um, a little bit more understanding that day. Maybe I can get a sense of when they are best set up to do some really deep work and maybe when it's asking a lot at the, you know, the three o'clock hour in their time zone to be fully plugged in at work. Cause maybe that's when 
stuff's really kind of uh, at its most hectic at home. So I've found a new level of, I feel really plugged in in life. Um, I don't know about the balance part, but I feel more plugged into life and my job than, than I ever had when I was kind of crossing different thresholds of I'm at work now, so I should be in work mode. I'm at home now, so I should be at home mode. Um, having to kind of find some ambidexterity between the two. Um, I found that to be wonderful. Yeah. And I, I'd love to spin off of that too, of, you know, I think you're hinting at some of the challenges that I mean, especially when we were, when, when a lot of us, you know, Kim, you were working remote before, before COVID hit, but uh, you know, especially when a lot of us were thrust into it uh, in a matter of days, um, what were some of the challenges that, you know, we experienced and that are, that are special, especially still present in, you know, potentially fully remote or hybrid models? Like what, what are some of the things that, that maybe we're missing out on or that we're having to adapt for a little bit? Um, not to say that they don't out, outweigh the pros, but just want to kind of take take a lens at that. Any Anything specific that, that we would call out there? Kim, if you have thoughts, I'll let you start. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, it was really unique going into this in a fully remote environment, right? So I was actually traveling in Africa when COVID became a larger issue. Um, my family has their own debates of whether I should have been traveling, but I was lucky to to safely make it home. Um, but it, it for for us, it was trying to understand that your home office very much was your home office before, and it was still like your workspace. And then it became where all of your family was for a large majority of our of our team. So it's truly leaning into what does that mean, right? What do you need? Um, one of the things I actually leaned into my team and asked is like. You have children, when is meltdown hour? Block your calendar. Like, you know when meltdown time is. Block your calendar so we're all aware so we can work around it. We have people working different hours. We have people working different schedules. Um, and we're just trying to understand, like, how to help them find that new, um, yeah, that that new workflow in their in their home environment, which was very much not their home office anymore. Um, and that was, that was the main thing that we truly leaned into was just listening and trying to understand as they're all navigating it together. Um, and, uh, that all came upon us very, very quickly, right? Cause schools shut very quickly, all those things happened. And then through that, we just kept paying attention to what were the positives we were learning about when we listen to our team members and provide them with what they need, how much, um, more value do they feel? How much more supported do they feel that whole, uh, the, the concept of truly building that psychological safety for those more open and honest dialogues. It is the balance of making sure we're doing the right thing by our team members as well. So that was a really great thing for us to help create more of that um, safety within the organization as well through that listening and understanding. Love that. And I, and I think ultimately, like, I, we've kind of, you know, outcome driven, you know, asking our team, like, I think it all comes back to trust. And I think that that can just be so powerful um, to really just trust our employees to take care of their work and life um, and, and and make things happen and still be able to move the business forward. Um, yeah, while, it's, while balancing it's, it's, yeah, it sounds like a really easy thing. It's like everyone just trusts each other, please. And you're like, OK, great. <laughs> Everything's fixed. Exactly. Trust is incredibly hard. People build trust differently. People lose trust differently. People take longer mm -hmm. to gain trust back. But what it does enable is like we truly were having honest conversations with our team members mm -hmm. in a way that like us as people leaders have constantly wanted to happen. And then there was this space for us to say, OK, let's like showcase how honesty can help in so many areas across the business, whether it's in relation to your true performance or immediate honest feedback, what you need to be successful mm -hmm. in the organization, all this honesty factor. Um, yeah, it was it was a very challenging time to try to balance finding those positives as well of things we were learning through navigating it all together. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'll kick things over to you, Any or AJ. Just kidding. You were about to say something. AJ, go no, for it. No, I was just going to touch on hybrid work because yeah. I think hybrid solutions oftentimes seem like unmanageable, right? They get a bad rap for like, oh, it's really difficult to coordinate when people are in office without having... Um, then empty desks on the days that they were remote. And it's something that was a very real topic for us, but something, a huge pro from a hybrid situation is I think it gives another great opportunity. Um, and I think Kim, you might've mentioned this, but to meet your employees, like where they are, or how they like to communicate best. Mm -hmm. um, because I have some one-on-ones that are done during um, our remote days with my staff. Um, and it's a different type of one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes it's a little bit more personal because you're in you're at home having that conversation, not in a stiff, albeit we have a, a great office, but you know we're not in an office environment having that conversation. 
Likewise, it promotes, um, and this is the same for remote as well, but very um, intentional communication channels, right? Having those available and accessible. And so that's still an option. Um, but then going into the office as well regularly to have that conversation. So um, I think um, just touching on the hybrid a little bit, just because I know that's near and dear to at least um, my organization, at my heart, and uh, very prevalent um, in conversations that we're having currently. Um, but then I think the only other, you know, touching on a little bit of the challenges is um, just um, being very intentional about communication and how you're reaching your staff and, and when you're reaching them um, and what means of communication works best for them, no matter where you are. Mm -hmm. I think the when too is, is very important. I, I think we have a question for this one later on, but uh, especially as like, I mean, the Purpose Jobs team itself is spread out across three time zones. So um, uh, it's just really, yes, being conscious of, of where your team is working and, and what time it is for them and, and, and so on and so forth. So I uh, love that. Uh, Will, I'll kick things over to you for any, any final thoughts there. Yeah, I have a, I have a, I'm glad I'm getting to back clean up here because a, a couple <laughs> of reactions to what's been said. I. I I love the fact that trust was raised. Um, I don't know that I have any hard evidence, but definitely some anecdotal uh, evidence to support that this this kind of created um, or exposed like new levels of uh, lack lacking trust in some organizations. I know I've heard a lot more instances where people have said, "I'm going to need expectations in writing." where maybe previously on an assignment or um, on any kind of thing they were being asked to do, they would have just taken it based on some verbal direction. Um, it seems like trust has kind of been called into question across some, especially big organizations, when there's not this put one foot in front of the other, come into the office and you'll kind of figure out what you're supposed to be doing. Um, so I, I recognize why, you know, I think that's for good reason, especially considering how many people have taken on new jobs, new roles, new challenges during this time. Um, the other thing is, you know, we touched on a lot of the positives and, and I'll be transparent. I've had a pretty positive experience through these past few years of getting autonomy and flexibility and all the stuff that usually get touted as positives. But I, I also know that, um, you know, the obvious uh, depending on your background, your situation, maybe this hasn't been as positive a shift to go remote. And when not everybody went flocking back to the office, it, even if you were able to return to the office, it might not be the office you remember or the office you really wanted to return to. Um, and flexibility sounds great or autonomy sounds great if you like those things. But there are, you know, neurodiverse folks who are like, I'm going to need it spelled out much, much clearly. And I really crave structure instead of some of us thrive in ambiguity. So uh, again, I think it's just, it's required such a degree of understanding, empathy, and over-communication. I don't know how anybody would expect to be successful managing or being managed uh, through this without being really, really uh, available and approachable and, um, and feeling like they've got free reign to communicate. Yeah, just, just, to, just to add in here something, what you're talking about is the, we now put so much more intentionality behind the work we do for our teams. And when you're thinking about even like programming that used to just be a program within the organization, now it's a program that has to work in a hybrid environment. And there's so much more intentionality behind that. That makes everything better, right? So if we're meeting people where they are and actually truly understanding what they need, then our programming and our people growth and development has to match that and has to meet them there. And so the, the, the intentionality behind what we do is just extrapolated significantly in a really positive way. I love that. Thank you all for, for commenting on, on that. Um, I want to shift to the, the topic of, of inclusivity. Um, talk to me a little bit, you know, share with the audience, you know, how, how can, you know, remote or more flexible hybrid style environment uh, be a bit more inclusive? Um, yeah. Uh, AJ, do you want to kick things off? Um, sure. So, I mean, I think you could slice and dice it a thousand different ways, right? Um, taking a personal lens on it as a mother, um, when you can swap out your commute um, and you can swap out maybe the walk to get coffee um, for maybe just a little bit more time with your child in the morning um, or doing a load of laundry, um, that, that balance, or as Kim would say, or I guess Hannah, it was you, that harmony um, just feels that much greater, right? It's that much more present. Um, and so um, it's no wonder, I mean, I, 
I don't know how many of you have read the, the articles on um, that came out post pandemic around um, the workforce shift, but many mothers never returned back to the office or never returned to the workforce because they just it just gave us an opportunity to recognize um, how important that time is. Um, but even more, I mean, um, pre pandemic um, super commuters, so commuters that were traveling more than 40, uh, I, actually, I'm sorry, 90 minutes per day, um, they were on the rise. Um, and just think about that time given back. And the reason that they were on the rise is because they couldn't afford to live close to the office. So people were traveling further and further for jobs that they really wanted um, uh, because they had to. Um, there was no other option. So again, removing that boundary, you have access to much, so much greater of talent. And likewise, that talent has access to so many more opportunities. Um, and And then um, disabilities as well. Um, you know, it's it's more difficult if you have a physical or a mental disability to, to commute regularly. Um, and so I think that there's a number of different ways or a number of lens, uh, lenses to put on it and, and, and um, perspectives um, that um, just really go to show you that um, no matter how you're looking at it, it truly does promote inclusion. Um, at, from at least uh, giving more talent the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, increasing access to opportunity. I think mm -hmm. I think that really sums it up really well. Mm -hmm. uh, Will, how about we go to you? Yeah, I mean, I think um, the the obviously geography. It's opened up new markets that you know. I know personally, just in my own hiring over these past couple of years, I've benefited from some talent that I've been able to find because. I don't have the same proximity or market bias that I maybe would have posted a role only in a specific city. So that and things like it are, are, are some of the, the obvious ones that I'm sure a lot of us have experienced. I also think though, not to, not to repeat too much what we've already touched on, I think it's just made me much more inclined early on in conversations and new relationships with peers, with people on my team, uh, with managers, to really get curious about what works best for them around their workday and not kind of start from this default place of, well, work for everybody usually takes place here and starts around this time of day and ends here. And then people like to go do things like X, Y, and Z after. Um, and, and that's been really helpful to me in forging, you know, a lot of new working relationships with many of whom with people I've never met, right, in, in person. I kind of forget that I haven't met them in person usually. Um, uh, the first time that we meet. Um, but yeah, I think that's just one of the advantages that falls under the um, kind of the umbrella theme of inclusivity is it's it's made me much more curious about what's going to work for the individual and kind of build the team around that as opposed to starting from a default place of, you know, unfortunately, what usually works best for me and assuming that works best for everybody. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks, Will. Kim, we'll go to you. Yeah. Um, also, Will, so I, I couldn't help but but giggle because I can't tell you how many times I'm like, hey, good to see you. And I was like, oh, wait, we haven't met yet. Like, ah, right, I'm yeah, like, right. So we work yeah. together. I didn't remember you being so tall. Oh, wait, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is the funniest thing is everyone's yeah. comments are always about height, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it, it, it's about we always, Will's 100% correct. We create in our own image of what works for us because we assume everyone, <laughs> what works for us works for everyone. And so the the intentionality behind it, I think is really great. And the, the competitive nature that this has created within workspaces has made us all sharper, right? Um, so from an inclusion per perspective, we actually finally started allowing people to truly talk about stuff within the workplace and bring forward things that they needed from an, an inclusivity perspective. And my goal along all of this has to been like create the space, allow people to talk, allow us to learn from the experiences of others, seek that understanding, do the training about biases and, and conditioning to allow for that safer space. But then let's put some policies behind it to make sure that we're truly creating a place of continued inclusivity. And that's where we as people leaders have that unique ability to get intentional behind the actual policy changes, um, which can help us attract the best talent and that and create those those spaces for um, truly inclusive workspaces. 
So some of the things we've done is we want to lean into even more transparency surrounding pay because that's the main thing a lot of people worry about, whether from an accessibility perspective or a minority perspective or gender perspective, am I getting paid equally for someone else doing the same job? So we want to lean into showing you you do, right? So then there's no question there. And how can we as people leaders increase that transparency within the workspace to truly create places for all? That's where I would encourage everyone to look into the policies. You can actually question and challenge that have just been the way that we've done things and push for more transparency um, to truly create those places of, of belonging. Like I don't want us to lose what we've learned. And now is the time as we evolve um, as, as, as workspaces how can we truly put some policy behind it? Perfect, thanks. I think this this uh, shifts us into the next question that I'd love to dive into. So, so you all, as as people managers, um, talk to us about some of like what what are the tactical things that you've really implemented um, in this in this remote, this more remote or hybrid space um, to one maintain a really strong culture for your team and and make sure that they do feel that they have that flexibility to, to, to work the way that they best work. So whether it's tactical about how do we communicate best in this remote setting or like how often do we get together for a retreat so we still have that in-person time. Um, talk to us about some of, some of the things that you've learned, some of your best practices and really advise those other, other people leaders listening today. Uh, let's see, Kim, can we go back to you on this one? Sure, sure, I'll jump in. Um, so as I mentioned, we do summit weeks. We do those once every quarter. They're a blend of like team time and then organizational time. So you get your own specific team days that you can utilize. And then we have um, organizational days where we do more organizational focused items. We also actively train on our tools on a pretty regular basis. Um, pretty sure everyone here and when the calendar invite pops up, you're like, oh my God, I had one half an hour left on my calendar and they grabbed it. Like the calendar etiquette we talk about a lot. Um, we have we have pursued using different uh, calendar timeframes to allow for that space to actually go get some water. I think we've all gotten onto our calendar and been like, great, straight through till 530. All right. <laughs> when am I going to eat? Right. So how we make sure that like a hybrid environment doesn't mean a calendar driven environment. Um, so we we talk very frequently about those. We uh, allow team members to look for new tools, and then how do we utilize that like tool suite together to make sure we're all using them in similar ways? I'm not sure if you guys have heard of Miro, but it's a great collaboration tool that we utilize. Um, so we just always try to lean into talking about how we work to make sure that we're not slack hitting people constantly during their off hours, being more intentional about sending a delayed message versus hitting people during the off hours, all of those etiquette related things we're still working on together as we evolve into this hybrid environment, but it's just something we openly talk about. Absolutely. Uh, Will, how about we jump to you next? Yeah. One of the benefits of doing these kinds of events is I get to steal some really great phrases from people like Kim and AJ. So uh, <laughs> not being a calendar driven environment is uh, something I'm going to, I'm going to borrow and hang on to. Uh, <laughs> Because that's that's been one of the things I think um, I've found to be really successful, and I've I've started to share with a lot of the people uh, that I with whom I work um, is just thinking differently about how I structure and configure my own calendar. So you know, it used to be here's the workday, and I'm you know I'm in this city or I'm in this city or in this office or this office. But um, and you know, external meetings are kind of what I would use as anchors and build things around that. Now I've taken more of an approach where, you know, I try to devote one day a week to either this is strictly to see people in person or it's strictly for really deep work that requires some concentration where you're not context switching between 15, 30 minute meetings all about something different. Um, I've tried to, you know, bucket together things like one on ones to, you know, be over the course of an afternoon. Um, and know that I'm not going to be terribly productive that afternoon actually churning out work, but that's fine because this is a, a different part of my job that I need to invest some time in. So that's been something I know that has helped me and I, uh, I've i gotten positive feedback that a lot of other people have found that same kind of tactic to be necessary in this environment. Um, building on that, I think just being really conscious about formats, different tools, um, Asynchronous work is something I'm sure we're going to talk about, uh, but I know I've found that to be incredibly helpful in both where I was before VidMob and now, um, even though it's a much smaller company and a much smaller team. Um, that's one of the uh, kind of fluid parts of this work style that I think we, we have to get good at 
in order to be really effective and, and use time well when we are together so that it feels like, okay, this was, ne whether it's in a room or over a remote setting, um, this was necessary to get us all together at the same time. Uh, we're coming in with sufficient context and having already kind of been productive to some element um, so that now what needs to be a conversation is, is devoted to the conversation. Awesome, thanks Phil. AJ, we'll go to you next. Sure. Um, a lot of my thoughts echo both Will and Kim, so I'll spare you that. But I think in short, um, when I reflect on managing my own team, it's setting proper expectations up front um, and um, providing um, those expectations to the team, but being willing to evolve those expectations as well. Um, I think Kim had mentioned, hey, we're still learning, right? And we're still changing and adapting. So some of it is being willing to give yourself grace as a manager, give your employees grace as employees and, and adapt your approach. Um, but I do think that they need to be crystal clear on those expectations. Um, maybe it is they are allowed to work remote, um, but they're expected to be on and available during these hours or having SLAs around if somebody pings you during these core business hours, a response is required within a certain period of time, those sorts of things. Um, and um, having that either um, written into a policy um, or at least communicated up front um, to really avoid those mishaps, you know, those, those mishaps on, on the back end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'd love to hear from everyone else. What um, what are some of those those expectations that have been set with your teams when you are getting more into that asynchronous work? So I think AJ mentioned, you know, having specific hours um, over over at Purpose Jobs, we're asking for like four hours of overlap on like the primary primary you know timeline of, of Eastern time time zone. Rather um, curious what what Will and Kim what what your all's organizations kind of expectations have been around you know overlapping hours. Um, Will, do you want to share first? Yeah, there across different teams, there have been some new guidance that's rolled out across our company in terms of just you know in general, in order to schedule a meeting with more than you know two other people, kind of thing. These things should be in place, right? So if there should be a pre-read, please send it out in X amount of time ahead of the meeting, so it's not hitting inboxes five minutes before the meeting, which at that point isn't much of a pre-read. Um, mm -hmm. Other things like that that are just good calendar, good meeting etiquette that I think are, are even more necessary now. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, there's a few different approval channels and things like that, that um, we've uh, made some overhauls to be really communicative with, okay, if you need an approval on X, maybe for a, a pricing uh, negotiation or something like that, then submit by this time in order to get an answer by X hour the next business day or things like that. I think, um, you know, we can always choose to be flexible in extenuating circumstances, but it just really helps to set people's expectations on what reasonable looks like. Mm -hmm. For sure. Thanks, Phil. Kim, go ahead. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's so true. <laughs> it's like some people's expectations on how pressing something is because it's top of their list as means top of someone else's list. And that's something that we like continue to struggle with in a, in a hybrid environment is you're being tasked with getting something done and you're blocked. Um, so we are we are still navigating through that. Um, as I mentioned, some of our roles do require some people to be in the office. We make sure those are overlapping days. So we're maximizing that, right? And we make sure that we're bringing in lunch. So we're maximizing like the natural interactions as well. Um, we've really leaned into working sessions, virtual working sessions. Miro is a great tool for this so that people can like get in that conference room together and work on something together make it better because of their thinking diversity and what that brings to it. Um, so we've really encouraged that and creating the space for that working time has been something we've been really intentional about where previously finding that in the calendar have been really hard. Um, the other thing we've just been really intentional about is like what comes through what channel in Slack, right? So what channels do I have to watch every day? What do I not? How can I or organize my sections to make sure I'm paying attention to what I need to pay attention to and I'm not being distracted by what I'm not mean to pay attention to on a daily basis, but are more for like enjoyment, right? Um, so how are we making sure that we're being more intentional around that? And then we use Asana as a project management tool, which has been great for the approval stuff you were talking about, Will, right? We can build that in and there are dates aligned with this. We can see where the blockers hit. And that's what's been really helpful. It's for, for me with a lot of things, 
that I'm constantly blocking, it's really helpful for me to go into Asana to be like, cool, here's the list of the 10 things I'm currently blocking. Let me focus on getting everyone unblocked so that we can keep moving forward. Um, it has been just, it's about the tools. How do we use them? Why do we use them? And being really intentional around that has been super helpful. Mm -hmm. I love that, Kim. Uh, could not live without Asana. Um, <laughs> not at all. It's really blocky, um, but, but Asana's great. <laughs> Um, I also just like, I feel like someone needs to create a checklist of like remote and hybrid work etiquette. Um, so yes. really love that we keep coming back to that. Maybe that can be a purpose jobs blog that, that we'll get. With that. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Um, so I want to spend a little bit of time of, of, as people leaders, um, you know, digging into that culture piece a little bit more. Um, how do we really maintain and build that strong remote or hybrid culture, um, when we're not seeing each other face to face as, as often? Um, so, Will, I feel like you've, you've got lots of thoughts coming around. Do you want to kick things off there? I feel, I, Hannah, I feel like this is where one of our conversations started a few months ago. I, yes. um, <laughs> so I've been lucky enough to work in what I would consider to be really high culture environments, you know, companies that really prioritize culture and, and not only at a company level, but at an organizational level. Um, culture that you really felt when you walked into the building and, and hopefully uh, translated over or cascaded to a virtual setting. Um, but I also think that, you know, to some extent at companies that I've been at personally and, and certainly a lot of companies that I uh, know people who've been with, culture kind of was um, uh, what the office felt like was sort of seen as a proxy for company culture. And I think if we all go our separate ways and log into Zoom or StreamYard and the culture is not there, then it probably wasn't a very strong culture in the first place because um, it should stem a lot more from the values and how we work together as a company and, and who we serve than the posters on the wall or the food in the cafeteria. Um, those things are great. I'm not, I'm not minimizing the, the role that those play at all. Um, so I think on one hand, it's called into question, what is this thing we mean when we say culture in reference to a company? But I also think it's, it's been really additive and, and beneficial to get serious about culture has to be more than what the office looks like. Um, and so I've seen purpose get talked about maybe even more than company culture. Um, I've seen on it, on the individual employee level, people get really invested in and curious and engaged with a company's purpose. I think that's in line. And I'm not just saying that word because that's, you know, this is a purpose jobs panel. Uh, it just happens to happens to net out that way. Um, but, uh, no, I think I've just seen on the individual level, people get invested and, and, and engaged um, with whatever that purpose might be. So for instance, um, social good and, and, and um, uh, a division of our company called VidMob Gives does a lot to give back to causes that otherwise might not be known about or might not have resources at their disposal. And seeing individual employees get involved in that work um, has been incredible, especially considering we're all working remotely and there's not you know, a happy hour that can be hosted to kind of raise awareness at the company level about uh, um, opportunities like that. Awesome. Thank you, Will. You summed it up perfectly there. Kim, you look like you're ready to say something. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just been, it's been fascinating going from like 100% hybrid engagement to, or 100% remote, pardon me, to hybrid, because honestly, 100% remote is similar to in office because everyone's at that equal playing field, right? Mm -hmm. When we do something together, everyone's logging in. And granted, we were from Hawaii to South Korea. So finding the time zones was, um, was an interesting challenge for us to work through. But everyone was logging in on equal playing field. And that's what we've tried to continue to create within hybrid is to make sure that if you're in person, that you're in person. And if you're remote, that we're creating that space for remote. And if it's hybrid, we're really, I'm sorry to keep using this word, but intentional around. So who's hosting the hybrid environment to make sure that their questions are being answered, they can get into the dialogue, they can be a part of the experience. And that's been really interesting to navigate, truly, um, because we had something, um, one of our summit weeks because of, of the, the continued um, pandemic concerns, we had one of our summit weeks earlier this year, we had it, the option to come into the office or to stay home because there were there was a, a large spike during that time. So our trivia night, we made 100% join from your computer because otherwise it wouldn't have been the same experience, right? Because some people would be in this room 
and they would be having one experience separate of the rest of the organization that was joining from their laptop. So we made everyone join from their laptop and it worked great. Was it weird having people in offices and desks? Sure, but but we were intentional about everyone's going to join virtually because that's the environment that we're trying to set up from a cultural engagement perspective. And it's thinking about those things, what we need to do. Will made such a good point earlier where it's like, we used to just be like, culture's fun because like, <laughs> look at our snacks. And people used to put those on job descriptions too. And now we're like, no, people are demanding more from culture and that's a good thing. People are demanding more in terms of what they're expecting about how they can enter in a workspace and workspaces are not physical spaces anymore. So we have to be thoughtful about what we are creating from a cultural perspective and creating the ability for people to constantly give us feedback on that. I mean, a lot of us used to do culture engagement surveys once a year. <laughs> we do it more often now, right? We need to understand how are we evolving as a culture? What do our team members need? Where are their gaps? How can we continue to identify how we grow this culture and be really thoughtful about all those things that we're doing in terms of community engagement and internal engagement within our organization to continue to grow that best place to work. Absolutely. I, I love that. I could repeat back all of what you've both said and yes, it would be perfect. Uh, AJ, I'll let you jump in. Sure. Um, no, I love that point, Will, um, about companies kind of misinterpreted the office office environment for what the culture was, right? And um, that's not how culture is defined. It's not defined by how many pool tables you have, what color of, you know, cool Benjamin Moore paint is on the wall or what your brand looks like. It's defined by the people. Um, and of course, I'm going to take this back to a recruiting element. Um, if you have a company that clearly defines core values and recruits to those, then your culture should be defined no matter where your workforce is um, and upheld by that as well, no matter where they are. Um, so I still agree with that. So um, I think from the intentionality of upholding a, you know, a, a, a core uh, culture, um, it goes back to selecting the right people um, that, that meet your company's core values. Um, and then um, being very mindful of engaging um, and continuously iterating upon um, how you keep them engaged. Mm -hmm. now, one, one thing to add on the engagement is similar to what you're talking about earlier. You tend to think everyone wants to engage the same way you get engaged at an organization. And what hybrid has allowed us to do is actually allow people to engage to the level that they're comfortable. And we need to embrace and appreciate that because some cultural environments I thought were so fun. Like back in the day, I used to I used to take all those Jimmy Fallon games and we'd have like the the the, the egg roulette game going on. And I thought it was hilarious, right? Other people were like horrified by the idea of being called in front of the organization to smack yeah. an egg in their face. And I did not have that awareness in my career at that time. And that's what hybrid has allowed us to do is to realize that some people have full engagement with doing their job. And they actually feel more valued by being able to do their job, when they want to do their job, how they want to do their job, and then check out for their other aspects of their life. And that's what they're looking for from their culture. And that's where cultures are not one size fit all. We have to understand we're building these hybrid cultures that allow people to engage to a level that they're comfortable. And we need to be respectful of that as well. Um, and that's where hybrid truly enables that mm -hmm. and allows people to join in. Now, we do have to continue to create those engagement activities because there are some people who need those but also having that understanding and making sure you're listening to all of your team members, not just the most vocal ones, to truly understand how to create that equitable and accessible culture for all. Absolutely, yeah. And I think too, just like, uh, you know, along this line of, of, of culture and just how do we really uh, make sure that we, because it can be easy, like a, a purpose is a fully remote company. Um, I think one, like, I think one really cool thing is like, I definitely feel like I knew these people and I was like, oh wait, this is, you know, we finally have a retreat together. It's like, wait, this is the first time I'm actually meeting you. Like, but you know, we, we have such a strong culture already that we're really able to feel, I don't know, we just vibe together type of thing um, and, and just really feel that strength behind it. Um, but you know, it's also little things like having a random Slack channel and asking people to share photos from their weekend if they want or something like that. Um, and, and, you know, making opportunity for some of those things that, we lose when we can, you know, look at each other's phone together, like, you know, at, at desks next to each other. Um, yeah. So yeah, just thinking through yeah. some of those tactical things. We have we have a whole Slack prefix thing to help organize Slack channels. And we have one that's a prefix is enjoy. And they're just fun channels. Like enjoy reality TV, 
enjoy pets. People are posting photos of their pets. Enjoy DIY. People doing rehabs in their house, asking questions about that. Like, mm -hmm. and it's nice. You can just pop in, enjoy food. They're great recipes, right? It's like creating the space, but you don't have to go pay attention to it all the time. It's not a requirement of your job, but it is a place to go yes. and engage and bond with team members you might not interact with on a daily basis in a hybrid environment. That's worked really well for us. Yeah, totally our, agree. Our pets Slack channel is some days more active than any other <laughs> Slack channel at the company, I think. Our, our plants Slack channel is starting to gain some real traction. There's a lot of people. Oh, right you might need to start up. Yeah. Into it. Yeah. Mm, that's Very awesome. Fun. I love that. Um, cool. And, uh, and then I think the, the one other thing that I was just going to say was, especially to, you know, when you are a fully remote or more hybrid work environment, you know, and you, you invest the time and money into those retreats and get to do fun things um, to make up for, for, you know, the spontaneous things that you maybe would have done had, had you been more in person. Um, so it's like we went kayaking on the Detroit River when we had our last re retreat. And, and that was just a really fun way to get out with with the team um you know, we don't get to spend that time together as often so um i think things like that can be really fun cool okay um to the audience uh if you have any questions please post those in the chat um i'm gonna wrap up with just one or two slash uh you know grab anything that that, that you all throw in um so we've talked a lot to i think um and I hinted at, but we've talked a lot to, you know, people leaders and how can they help create that environment. But what advice would you all give to individual contributors who are really working in those remote or hybrid models? Um, how can they really advocate for themselves? Um, you know, make sure that they're figuring out and, and asking and advocating for, you know, the environment that they are best able to, to work in. Um, so just curious what all what advice you all would have to share on that front. Kim, I'll, I'll let you go first. All right. Um, manage up, <laughs> like tell them what you need, have the confidence to tell them what you need, but embrace it in a way where you are saying you want to have this dialogue to like grow trust and to, and to make sure that you truly understand like the expectations for the role and the outcomes, um, desired from this working relationship. And then just start to have the conversation. Like it is, it is a hard thing to manage up. Um, and I would encourage, uh, individual contributors that there are, areas of concern or areas of um, ambiguity to call those out and ask the questions and approach it from a place of like, I am dedicated to being the best possible boy here, right? I want to make sure we have the best possible working relationship. Um, yeah, let's have this open and honest conversation. Uh, I would highly encourage doing that um, and pushing forward the dialogue if it's not being brought to you. Thanks, Kim. I think that's spot on. AJ, how about you? Um, Similar notes as to what Kim said, um, quite honestly, um, oftentimes managers don't know what they don't know, right? So um, don't be afraid to be vocal about um, unclear direction or um, resources that you might not feel you have access to. Um, and, um, and also um, very communicative about what's going on in your life. Um, as it was mentioned earlier on, um, remote's great, but it's allowed us much more into the privacy of somebody's own home, right? And sometimes you can't hide what's going on at home. You can't hide that barking dog. You can't hide that crying baby. Um, but if you can provide um, uh, your audience member, it will be on the other end of that Zoom, whether it's your manager or a customer, those upfront expectations that, hey, I apologize. I have housework that's being done or... Um, there's quite literally right now um, a cement mixer outside of my home. And if you can hear it in the background, I do apologize. Let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll slip, you know, flip to a, a headset. Um, those sorts of things really um, uh, level set uh, the conversation and, and, and start it off on the right track. Um, so just being upfront and honest, um, no matter where you're working. Love that, AJ. Unexpected, just housework or, you know, area work is definitely uh, mm -hmm. always fun to, to try and navigate. Um, well, I'll turn it to you and I'll also expand it not only to, you know, how, how can individual contributors like, you know, manage up and work up with their managers, but also like, how do they, you know, work with team members as well? Um, so, yeah. well, I'll yeah. let you dive in. <laughs> AJ, you're all good on the cement mixer. I can't hear a thing. Um, yeah. but, but similarly, I'm in a hotel banquet room because I'm living in hotels for a while while we have some home renovations. So there's a vacuum not too far away from me that's being operated. Hopefully that's not drowning out my audio. Um, and 
you know, I, I think that's actually kind of what I would encourage everybody to, especially earlier career folks, uh, individual contributors at, at any stage, like take the armor off. Um, we're, we're all doing this. And frankly, we've all been doing it for about the same amount of time. So I personally have found, you know, leaders are never more um, hungry and dependent on everybody on their team being self-aware, knowing what is and isn't going to work for them to set them up for success. Um, and then really communicate that and lead with, hey, based on what I know about my work style, this is this is what's really helpful for me to be able to perform. Um, I also think some folks kind of quickly caught on as soon as we, whatever stage of this pandemic we're in at this point, that we don't necessarily have to be working from home anymore. I'm encouraged by the fact that we're not talking as much about working from home. We're still talking an awful lot about working remotely. I think we're kind of just working at this point um, <laughs> and, or, or at least working from everywhere is a phrase that I use a lot because some days I'm in the office, some days I'm at home, some days I'm wherever I can manage to be, some days I'm starting to travel again. Um, but I think there are more and more options today than there were, you know, certainly in, in the better part of 2020 and, and, and even last year, um, where if it's available to you, you can kind of carve out any number of situations or locations that work best for you. And so I think that's also like seeing people kind of get entrepreneurial and resourceful about, okay, we need to get the team together and maybe we could do that in the office, but maybe we could do it somewhere like this in order to complete this task or have this conversation. That to me is is really encouraging to see because it it kind of creates a more well-rounded work style and work experience for everybody. Mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, maybe we can just sum it all up with flexible work. Um, yes. <laughs> that is just like the new term there. Um, cool. I would love to just end things with, uh, this was kind of hitting me as well with talking about you know, working from home or this remote work isn't necessarily working from home. It can be different locations. Um, and one of my favorite pieces is that, you know, if I want to go work from, I don't know, Arizona or something like that for a week, I can, I can easily um, do that and, and be in a new environment, but still be really effective at moving the business forward. So uh, I'd say that's one of my favorite things about flexible work. I'd love if everyone just kind of ends on what is your favorite uh, thing about flexible work and, and what it allows you or, or your team. Um, yeah. Kim? Sure. Um, I will say what I like is that it's been flexible while my life has evolved and my flexibility needs have evolved. So I used to work from everywhere. I would just, I had Google alerts up for cheap flights and whatever flight it was, I was like, sure, let's go. And I would just travel, right? Like I had a very different lifestyle. Now I have children in my life and I need different flexibility, but I still, the constant is that flexibility has been a wonderful positive in my working experiences. Um, and so I think that's the main thing is that flexibility can continue to evolve as your flexibility needs evolve. Um, and that's where we just need to make sure we're listening to our team members and um, meeting them where their flexibility needs are paired with that accountability and output expectations, right? But um, but yeah, it's it. I'm highly optimistic it is possible for us to continue to evolve even further as workspaces of true flexibility. Awesome, thanks Kim. AJ, I'll kick it over to you next. Yeah, um, my favorite thing about flexible work is just that I feel like work fits within life so much better. Um, you know, I don't feel like I need to take a full day PTO if I want to plan a vacation. I can be on if I want to work. Um, and it's just that much more manageable. And it, I mean, it just makes sense, right? It's just common sense to me. Um, so. Um, I love how much the workforce has evolved in that. Um, and I think we've made so many great strides with that um, over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, well, I'll let you close us out. I, uh, I totally agree uh, with both Kim and AJ. I think with this flexibility, I've just completely rethought what I mean by my own availability. Um, uh, I was you know, I considered myself really lucky uh, pre COVID and, uh, and up until about a year ago. Um, my wife didn't work outside the home. She stayed home. We have two little kids who are not as little now as they were when everything went remote. Um, a year ago, she started a business. She opened a, a local business in our community. Um, you know, there are certain nights during the week where she's prioritized work. I'm home with the kids. If I had to factor in a commute to be able to be home and um, 
look after their needs, I'd, I'd probably would have prioritized work first. And it's like, this is by when I can be home. And so some nights that works and some nights it doesn't because this all happened during this kind of work style. It's just, it's gone on the calendar and Hey, by Wednesday, I got to shut down at this time and I can, I can go back online late, but, um, from this hour late afternoon to this hour, kind of early mid evening, I'm otherwise occupied. And so I just have a lot more agency, I think over my own availability. And so, um, a lot of that for me means more time with my family and with my kids, but, um, but also it, it's kind of, it, it opened the door for me to be really productive at work in certain times where, Hey, it might be five 30 in the morning, but that's actually when I can crank out some really good work and not steal time from anybody else. Um, so, uh, that's, that's what I would say the best thing about it for me has, uh, has kind of opened the door to me. So you're seeing lots of harmony. Wow. <laughs> yes. Work-life harmony. Yeah. Um, love that. <laughs> awesome. um, thank you to our panelists. Thank you to the audience. Uh, we super appreciate you all joining us today um, and, and being a part of our community. Um, we hope you you learned a lot and we, we expanded your mind. Um, uh, keep an eye out um, on other things happening with Purpose Jobs. There are some um, links in the chat. You can check us out at purpose.jobs events. We also have a Slack community. Um, that you can join to, to further be a part of this conversation. But uh, thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, all.